But every time we travel, I look out the window. Where is he? Ah, here he comes, galloping up. Look, son, fella. And he'd look at me and just ride. But there was also something else that followed me. And it was not my imagination. A few things that followed me. There was another presence that I learned as I got older that followed me. From a child up. And it wasn't until I got older that I realized the danger of it and what his intent was. But then I thank God for another presence that showed up, that followed me, and it protected me from what I want to call it. I called it the thing. In the book of Genesis, chapter 4, mm -hmm. read it, preacher. May God bless the reading of his word. Genesis 4, verse 1. And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller on the ground. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offered it to the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crying unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a backbone into the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall, shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden, and Cain knew his wife, and she conceived, and bare Enoch. Church said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. So we know that God is everywhere, <clears throat> but uh, it's, also it's also possible to be in this world and be without the presence of God. That was a type of death. When you look at the genealogy of Adam, Cain is not mentioned. Abel's not mentioned because Cain cut him off and he could not bear seed. Cain bear plenty of seed, but he's not mentioned because God cut him off. A lot of people think that Cain went unjudged, but in the Garden of Eden, the soul that sent it would die. And that was his judgment. He died. He died a spiritual death as well as naturally so. And he died without God. Being led by the wrong spirit. When the Bible said the devil was a murderer from the beginning. 
How was it a murder from the beginning? It lets us know the only murder that was committed in the beginning was Cain and Abel. So then that lets us know then that Cain was influenced by Satan. And he killed his brother. His judgment was death. He's in eternal damnation. He was put out of the presence of God. But at least he had more respect for God's presence than some of us. He said this was too much for him to bear. Not being in the presence of the Creator. Some of you think you can do pretty good without him. And God said, I'll put a mark. Not that he was trying to protect Cain in his guilt, but he was trying to make sure that this didn't happen again as such. He didn't want mankind going around killing each other. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Cain got his judgment. His whole genealogy was wiped out from the righteous because of his sin. That's why he's not mentioned. It goes from Seth to Adam. It doesn't even mention Cain because he was excommunicated from the presence of God, our first human reprobate. And it was too much for him to bear. But God set a mark. No one knows exactly what the mark was, but whatever it was, it was a sign of a presence. Cain re recognized it. And whatever it was, it prevented people from necessarily coming at him. The Hebrew says it was some type of beacon, maybe, or a sign. But there was something that followed him. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. There was something that followed him all the days of his life until he died. You, you know, sometimes we can see spiritually a mark or a presence of all people. And God can open our eyes that we may see it. The Jehovah's Witnesses like to teach that when Jesus rose from the dead, that his body didn't rise. And it's said because uh, the disciples and the women didn't recognize him. But there's a word in the scriptures called holy. They didn't recognize him because their eyes were holy. In other words, he blew up their vision so they couldn't recognize him. So when they saw him, because he altered their eyesight, they didn't know that it was him until he clearly opened their eyes. If God puts a sign or allows a presence upon someone, then whosoever eyes he opened can see it. John looked at Jesus and he knew that he was the Christ after the baptism. Because after he baptized him, the Holy Ghost came down upon him in the form of a dove. Meaning it came upon him gently. Now, nobody saw this. But John saw it. He saw a presence. Because God opened his eyes. And so God marked Cain. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 1. It is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Unless I should be exalted 
above measure. Through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul said that he was taken up to the third heaven as a witness, that, there, that, that it does exist. And he heard some things that were not lawful. Uh, to, to repeat, he received revelations and understanding. And he said to keep him from being exalted above measure. Sometimes God has to do things to keep you humble. Amen. Because uh, sometimes the sometimes because of the multitude of blessings or the abundance of blessings or uh, he maybe have exalted you. Amen. And, and, and blessed you. And to keep you from uh, thinking more than yourself than you are. He allows things to come in to keep you balanced. So that you don't forget where you come from and, and you don't forget from whom your blessings flow. Yes, sir. When David wanted to build a king, build a, build a home for God, God used that technique. The prophet said, whatever you want, David, do it. But then God told the prophet, you go back and tell David, he, he can't build me a house, I'll build him one. He said, you let David know that I took him from the dung hill. I took him from cleaning up the sheep's manure and cleaning up behind the animals. And I made him king. And well, what was he going to do? Remind David where he came from. The sweet psalmist of Israel. Very handsome young man. Valiant young man. Courageous young man. He used to clean up behind the animals. Now look at him. But he'll be the first to tell you that the Lord is his shepherd. Because he had to learn and not forget where he comes from. And so Paul said he was, are you listening? Amen. Paul said that a presence was given to him. The messenger of Satan was appointed to him. To buffet him. Some theologians try to say it was lies, but no. The word buffet means to beat black and blue. He said, and I prayed three times, God, remove this presence. Remove this spirit. Remove this agitation. I prayed three times. Now you know when you pray sometimes you feel like the prayer just going up coming back down because you're praying the wrong prayer. Even if it's for deliverance. If you feel like it's not going anywhere it's because you're praying the wrong prayer. I never forget when we first got put out on the street. I never saw it before. I prayed all night long. I rebuked the shad. I rebuked everything. I rebuked the spirit. We're not going out. I prayed and prayed God. My family's not getting put on the street but son my prayer went up and came down. I just went to sleep. I was praying the wrong prayer. Was it God's will for you to get put out? Yes, it was. Because from there we went to the place where we should have been. But I didn't know it then, but I knew I was praying the wrong prayer. So I had to what? Brace myself and look for the will of God. He said, I prayed three times and God did not remove it. God said, my grace is enough. He said, therefore, I glory in my afflictions and in my infirmities. I give God the praise. Yes. He said, because I know that God has allowed not a holy angel, but a messenger from Satan to come against me. What's the reason? That I may not forget where I come from. So that means everywhere Paul went, he was expecting this presence to come, to stir up trouble, to cause pain and affliction all the days of his life. And yet, in the end of it, he still said that the dragon coming, but he's got no power over me. 
in the end of all that, having a demon follow him his entire ministry, causing trouble for him, creating situations. He still said, I have fought the good fight of faith, and I have finished yeah. my course. My God. He still said, I am persuaded that nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. Yes, I don't care what that demon stirs up. I don't care what this present, what type of problems it causes, or how it arouses people to come against me. It doesn't make a difference what I go through with animals or people or, or shipwrecks or robbers or thieves. He said, I'm persuaded in the midst of an evil presence, knowing that there's a presence following me, a man that's coming against me, I can still say that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. He still stood. He still stood. So then that lets us know one thing, that whenever God allows you to go through something, or even when he allows the enemy to come in, it's not to destroy you. So now, we see in the beginning, God marked him. Some type of sign beacon upon him. And we see here, 4,000 years later, he's telling Saul, this presence is going to be with you. So now, this is the point. Are y'all listening? Amen. I'm persuaded that many of us in here, we have a presence that follows us. And it ain't always God. It's not God all the time. You ever feel a certain way, discouraged or angry or bothered? And when you think about it, there is nothing wrong. Come on, teacher now. God has just blessed you. Uh -huh. Got your bills paid, you got a blessing there. You were happy for a moment, and then you go back to this frame of thought. And you, you say to yourself, where did this come from? Holy Ghost speak. Because there's a presence that's been following you. Been helping you think. It's been hindering you, bothering you, and troubling you for quite some time. And you don't realize it because you're used to it. It becomes a familiar spirit. A spirit that you're familiar with. A presence that's familiar with you. And you begin to think that it's you. And a lot of times, it's not a good presence. It causes you to continuously think a certain way. It causes you to act a certain way. Somebody say, how do you know that? How you know that? I'm glad that because no matter what your situation is, no matter where you go, you can change partners, you can change jobs, you can change cities. This presence and this frame of thought is always there. And the problems that it creates always come forth. Always. And this is important because these presence, they, they affect your thinking process. They move upon your emotions and your feelings and cause you to think in certain ways. This, these spirits, many of them, have watched us from a child up. And they have seen some of the things you've been through because they call some of it. And they manipulate you with this. You see, you may be filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is in you, but that doesn't prevent a spirit from moving upon you, yeah. meaning influencing you. And I once said, and I'll say it again. Someone possessed with a devil has a demon inside the spirit, and they take up on the attributes of that demon. But someone who is oppressed by the devil will act just like somebody who's possessed. The difference is, the one possessed has the spirit within them. But the one oppressed is listening to the spirit and obeying it. 
but the same result. You've been demonically inspired. Spirits can follow you from a child up. They can join themselves at any moment to your life if you're not sober and don't have an understanding of spiritual warfare. Believe not every spirit. Believe not everything that moves upon you. Why do you think sometimes we have all these senseless killings and young people going on a rampage and uh, they got programmed on how people snap. Listen, people. I'm going to be real with you. I know what I'm saying is true. Because as a young man, I had a spirit that vexed me, and I didn't know it was a spirit. And it was not my imaginary friend. Lord help some of these producers that make movies. You can tell they got some type of spiritual connection. That's right. I call this thing a thing. They got a movie about the clown, they call it it. This was called the thing. Are you listening to me? Listen to me carefully. This thing would float in the air like a cloud. I would feel the presence, and it wasn't in me. It came to me. Did y'all hear me? It wasn't in me, but I heard it speaking, young brothers. I heard it talking. And it would come, float in the air. And first I would feel the presence. And I said, there goes that thing again. And it would tell me, are you listening? Kill everybody in the house. I was 11 years old. Could you imagine me walking down the hallway? And then I hear that. And all of a sudden, you would think something was wrong with me when you saw my reaction. I was going into a room. It come out the side of the other room. I said, no, I love my family. I'm turning around talking to it. And then I run and I jump into bed because the only way I knew how to fight it was go to sleep. And when I woke up, it was gone. Now back in those days, it would have been very unusual for a young black boy to go through the house on a rampage like that. They would have thought I was crazy, but I wasn't. I heard it. You ain't crazy. You hear it. And you need to recognize it and quit putting it on God, because it ain't God. The presence of God doesn't speak to you like that. The presence of God doesn't cause you to be confused. The presence of God doesn't make you uh, uh, feel depressed or oppressed. The presence of God doesn't deceive you. The presence of God, you hear me, leaves you with the peace. It is a comforter. It doesn't trouble you. It does not bring about accusations. It doesn't cause you to point the finger or to be bitter or angry. That's not the presence of God. It doesn't come upon you and you feel like everybody's against you. The presence of God doesn't cause you to get in a bed of self-pity, but yet you never do nothing about it. The presence of God doesn't do it. I'm here to tell you all to say what you want. Some of you in here got a presence that's been following you a long time. That's why you can never seem to break out. You can never seem to get loose. You feel free. You feel happy. The next thing you know, you're back in. Because you think it's you. When there's a spirit following you. Why do you lie so much? You lie sometimes, don't even want to lie. It's a presence. How come you get angry sometimes and there's no reason for it? It's a presence. The presence that follows you. Is it good or bad? This thing, son, follow me. Notice what it would tell me to do. It would tell me to hurt my family. What, trying to get me to feel, don't nobody love you, don't nobody care. 
What's, what's your presence telling you? What kept me from doing it was I had love for my family. Love that overpowered these things. Amen. To God putting you what it takes to stand strong. He gave me reasoning and love. No. 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 The son, I'm speaking to this thing, and I wasn't crazy. I felt it. I heard it like you hear it. Like you feel it. You feel that lust spirit. You feel that spirit of pride. You feel that spirit that when you want to humble yourself, something comes in and hits you and all of a sudden you don't want to hear it. You refuse to see it. You refuse to humble yourself. It's a spirit. And it's got you fooled to thinking it's you. Well, somebody asked me, how do you know it's not you? How do you know it's not you? I'm glad you asked that. Because before it moves up on you, you're feeling completely different. Everything is fine. But when that presence comes, words come out of your mouth to shoot, your whole thought process turns. 